All right, guys. I'm in here on Lance's uh, high-quality precision granite plate right here. We've already cleaned it, and I've wiped uh, these first two set of parallels off. So what we're going to do, this is a set of uh, Brown and Sharp 920 parallels, inch and a quarter by two. And then this is a set of Bush parallels. These are one by two, all right? These are good, high-quality, hardened, and precision ground parallels. And what I want to do is I want to check them. So what we'll do is we'll sweep them underneath this test indicator. This is a tense indicator here. And what we'll do is we'll sweep them. And see, they're, they're kind of stuck together there. What we want to do is just sweep them. And I'll get you in closer so you can actually see this, but I'm just showing you what this is going to look like. And uh, we'll sweep them underneath the indicator like this to see what the variation is on uh, whether they're they're parallel, flat, you know, what, what it is. All right. So we'll set up the other camera so I can get you a better shot of what this is going to look like. And I'm going to do this for all of my parallels and, uh, and see where they check out at. And if any of them are bad, we'll go out there to the surface grinder and uh, regrind them and make them, make them all parallel to, you know, make them all parallel. Should I say, all right, we'll start with this guy right here and we'll go ahead and bring it in here on the, on the indicator. And we're going to get you zoomed in so you can get a better shot of the indicator here. Let's see if I can get that zeroed out. This is going to be really, really touchy. I'm just kind of bumping the surface gauge here. All right, I think we'll just start right there. And we'll just slide the parallel underneath it. You can see the needle moving, so we already got two tenths. You can see that jump in there. That's where we had some rusting happening on the parallel. Two and a half tenths. Some more rusting down there on the end. So it looks like we've got two and a half, two and a half tenths. Just trying to clear that rust. All right, we didn't repeat, so we started on one tenth there. Let me make sure that we started on one tenth. We're starting on one tenth there. I'm seeing about two tenths difference. Yeah, it looks like it's not perfectly square. Looks to me like this one definitely needs to be ground. Okay. So this one's going to be off a little bit. All right. Let me go ahead and slide the other one in here. Move that one out of the way and we'll get this one started. Matches up pretty close. One tenth, one and a half, and we're getting some bumps down on that end there. This one seems to, lead, to be a little bit more straight than the other one. I think this one's in a little bit better shape. So it looks like maybe a one and a half tenth bow in it. So, the brown and sharps need a little bit of work, right? We'll go ahead and see if we want to do a, uh, a match grind on, the, on that pair right there for the brown and sharps. So let's go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll bring the, uh, the Bush brand set of parallels in here. Let's see where these match up. And that one looks like it's, uh, it's definitely pivoting in the middle. Yeah, it's not even touching right there.
pushing on the ends with my thumbs. So it's definitely got a high spot. Let me, uh, I'm going to flip this thing over onto the other side and see. Yeah, it's pivoting in the middle there. Okay, much more pronounced on that side. Let's just start with, uh, oh, dang it. There we go, there's a zero. <laughs> Not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but still, you're looking at one and a half. One and a half to two tenths is, is what this one is at, out. All right, let's take this one off and then we'll uh, we'll check the other one and see where it's at. It's three under zero. Let's see if we go back to zero on that. So it's about the same. You're looking at approximately two tenths, two and a half tenths maybe. All right. Well, they definitely need some. Uh, they need. <laughs> they need some improvement there. So, all right. I'm gonna go grab a couple more, and see where some more check out at. All right. So these are gonna be my tap pierce. These are the, my big ones right here. Uh, let's see. One and three eighths by two and three quarter, I believe, is the size of these. Yes. Pretty good size parallels. All right. Now we'll have to readjust our indicator here. Dropping low. Looks like we got about one and a half tenths. So one and a half on that one there. All right. Move that one out of the way. Let's get our second one in here. That's about the best one that we have found so far. That one's checking out to be within one tenth. Nice. All right. Well, I didn't want to uh, bore you with uh, any more of the details, but what we're going to do, I'm going to come back in with each one and uh, I'll take a marker here and I'm going to actually mark, you know, uh, how much, how far out each one is and kind of, you know, put a line where they're at so that we'll have an indication of, you know, what each one is. And uh, then we'll go to the uh, surface grinder. I'm, I'm still waiting on Lance to get back from work. And then once he does, we'll, uh, we'll start our surface grinding. So Lance made it back to the shop and uh, he's putting his uh, expert skills to the test over here. And he went ahead and suggested uh, something that I didn't do. He's actually taking my stones that he made for me and he's uh, stoning the uh, the parallels because I already uh, marked on them where I thought the high spots were or what the variation was. So he's uh, he's stoning them out and he's already finding some uh, imperfections in them. Yeah, I mean these stones are obviously exceptional. These stones. The these parallels. Parallels, yeah, whatever they're called. Anyway, yeah, I just clocked back in so I'm a little slow this morning. But um, <laughs> had to take care of business. That's though. right. Yeah, I had to take care of my real business. Um, but if you actually look, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, can you see those 
there is an actual substantial high spot there. It was about three millimeters in diameter at the end of my finger. And then if you can actually see some grinding, some variations in the grinding. I Down think here I can in see particular, it. They're yeah. very because the the stone precision ground bent stone is is polishing this. So you know it's differentiating in that fifty thousand fifty millionths range of differences in height. I mean these are exceptional. We're, we're talking about extremely good to perfect. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, polishing these first with the stone is the way to go, and then we'll go back and measure them. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, I'll point out too, while I was telling Lance, the, these things have been used a lot, and sometimes they've been used pretty hard in, in our shop you know, for years. That uh, you know, we use them as standoffs a lot of times, where we're actually hanging them off the mill table, where you'll have like a clamp on the one side to clamp them down to the table, and then you'll hang another part out there, so you have a lot of down pressure pushing on these things. And then with being, uh, you know, under two tenths is amazing yeah and, and interestingly enough as soon as i put the stone on here adam the very corner i felt it i felt it in the stone and and there was a, like a little rolled up corner burr on this one okay and so you know and you wouldn't test that part of this of the mm -hmm. of the parallel because yeah. you never I, I can the see it there, but that whole corner as soon yeah. as i set that down you could just feel it and yeah. i felt it cut right off that's the beauty of these stones like mm -hmm. it won't touch anything but an irregularity and so for the people watching, can you, you know, when, it, when you buy one of these stones, you just buy one randomly that's not precision ground, they're not going to be completely flat. No. People have the misconception that you can take one of these stones straight from Norton and rub a precision surface like that, and it's going to be flat. And it's not necessarily going to be flat. You're going to be touching, you're just going to be touching, you know, maybe along the perimeter here, or maybe just in the middle, right? Yeah, I've had, I've had up to... 45 thousandths variation in the surface of a six inch stone. Wow. Bowed on one side, hollow on the other. And if you stick one of those stones on one of these gorgeous brown and sharp or taff pierced parallels, you will just mar it up. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you would just totally ruin somebody's wonderful uh, surface grinder work. Yeah. It's, you should never do that. that and that's what you would probably just like if you're on a flat surface, you're just going to be making scratches in it. That's all you're going to do. Yeah. Yep. You're not adding any value with that. These yeah. these stones are super safe. Yeah. Like these precision ground ones, regardless of where you get them from, for, for setup work like this, it's the only way to go. Cool. Lance is getting set up to start grinding some of these parallels for me. I'm taking these I-beam parallels and we're just, I'm hitting them on the coarse side of the stone here just to get rid of any of the burrs. He did point out, he had, he had uh, mentioned, these were actually ground on a Blanchard grinder. You see this cylindrical grinding shape, so they were spinning on the chuck as they were being ground. And we got the longer ones here. I don't know if you can hear that, you can already start to... There's a big ding right there, several little dings in there. All it takes is a few licks to get those down. Now we're good and flat. Flat enough to put them on the mag chuck. Boy, that one's got a real high one, I can feel. Right on the edge. All along the edge, it's got high spots there. Now you can start to see the uh, the grind pattern in it. And then let's just take a tenth of the time and watch this. This is pretty slow moving. When we finish, I'll actually crank it up a little bit, depending on how that's finished on there already. Even with that little shallow cut, looks pretty good. So. Well, if it's no problem, doing a match set of three would be 
Not a problem. Ideal. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how so, long it's going to take to, to get well, that Well, I'll get aggressive here, and then we'll okay. redress it with this. So. Just so you guys know, that one was 19 thousandths wider than these two right here. How, the, how they got that way, I don't know. I mean, these things are super old. So how much of a cut is that? Uh, four, four tenths. Not much. You're already making me nervous. <laughs> really? Why? So you'll just clean this side up well, and then flip it over, and then... Or you just going to do like... I'm going to try to take eight, eight to nine off of this side. Okay. We'll flip it, remeasure it, measure it flip it okay. and then finish it to close to that then i'll put it up all three of them up there okay we'll the oh yeah okay. Yeah, okay match them all yep. together yeah i'm not they're all going to be on here at the same time all right My big dial. Oh, okay. Getting close. Look at the. This is roughing. So roughing. Look, that's. Look at the finish on that. That's just like what I consider roughing anyway. But I, I can't. Yeah, if you can have a dry finger and put it on there. I mean, that's not. Like we're not even done. Not, that's not finished dress yet. Trying to give the uh, viewers a shot of oh, it. Okay, yeah. He calls that a roughing finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we can do better than that when we're when we're done. Wow. Yeah, I, I didn't take my time. Big so step you're, over. So you're gonna you're gonna finish this again? Yeah, we'll we'll, okay. we'll touch up both sides again. Right. So we took, I think he took twelfth thou off this side. So we're right. gonna flip it over. You're going to take about equally amount off that, and that's going to bring this down to uh, one of these other ones because these were smaller. And then once he gets this one about this size, then we're going to clean these up, and then he's going to do all three at the same time to make them a match, a matched uh, triplet set. <laughs> yeah, I mean, since you have an oddball, we might as yeah. well make them all the same. That way, when you grab them, you'll always have two that yeah that measure up. And that yeah. was yeah okay perfect yeah. All right, so here's here's this one. Uh, he's got it roughed in right there. All right, looking, looking beautiful. So there's the other two. So we're gonna go ahead and stick all three. So now we've got that third one kind of matched to the same height as those other two. And we'll go ahead and just do all three of them at the same time now. Because either way, we're within one to two tenths and this machine can take that and not even think twice about it, so. I think that's mag, what you're... That mag ain't that, ain't that flat, is it? Look at all the ridges on it. <laughs> yeah, it's there. You it's can just awesome. give it a little white and get rid of the dust, huh? Yep. Okay. All right. Let's put these up and see how good a job I can do for you. We, we're just turning these into about $1,000 parallels. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. So. If we were a customer, we couldn't afford these things. Exactly. I've always said I couldn't afford my own work. Man. <laughs> Good thing we can do it ourselves. G given my level of anal retentiveness, I could never <laughs> afford what I do if I had to pay for it. 
Okay. Fingers. Oh, very slippery. So Lance has got all three parallels now ground. You know, they're all flat, parallel to each other. So what he's going to do is he's going to dress the wheel because the wheel seems like it's a little loaded up and uh, get it dressed. And then he's going to put a polished finish on both sides of the parallel because he's a, he's a perfectionist, even though the, uh, the finish of those are just absolutely beautiful as they are now. He's going to clean the wheel and we'll, we'll polish them out. You want to know exactly how your wheels shift because it's never 100% flat. You know? out there. All right, here's uh, Lance's handiwork on the three parallels. Look how beautiful that finish is. So we now have a match triple set of the I-beam parallels here. They just turned out great. Love it, man. Looking good. So Adam and I have been on the grinder here for probably too long. He's super patient. It's like watching grass grow. But um, these I-beam parallels that he brought, we do have them all cleaned up. and They look great. Um, and one of the three of these is pretty stable and, and repeatable in terms of measurement. But I, I don't know if the mag chuck is influencing these because of their shape, but we're definitely getting some variation in um, in these parallels out on the sort of the wings of the eye. Um, if if we stay in the middle and we don't influence this uh, left to right, we're definitely within a tenth. But as we start drifting out very inconsistently on these non-supported areas. Um, we're definitely getting some variation. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's the influence of the mag chuck, if the material is you can not see. stable. I, I'm not really sure. I'd love to have you guys comment. I'm thinking, you know, when he mags down on it, you know, the material is just possibly moving. And they're, they're awesome for shop use, general shop use. You know, you're talking maybe up to two, three tenths variation in these things. Yeah, if I can stay in this relatively the same um, lane, so to speak, on these, they're, they're really very consistent, a tenth end to end. Um, and this is a, what, 50 millionths indicator, one of the best tests, 50 millionths indicator, which will drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so, I, I'd be open for comment, you know, that's a... Yeah. It, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and call these done. These three I beam parallels. It's really cool that uh, I mean they're beautiful as can be. Great finish on them. So let's just call those done. Yep. And uh, so Lance inspected. So these are my uh, Jones. These are the uh, it was the W E Jones shop made parallels, and he inspected all three pair. So we got these guys, and so we got this pair and this pair. He found to have a slight high spot in it. I don't remember what you found now. It was like maybe two tenths or so. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't much. There's a little crown on this yeah. side. Yeah. But this pair right here, the tallest pair, were like, I mean, they were just about as flat as it can be. Yeah. Flat enough where it's not worth even trying to grind them on the on the service grinder. We're just we're gonna leave these alone. There's no point in uh, messing with these. So, 
Yeah, my comment was take the precision ground flat stones and continue to polish these. They're fantastic. I can only make them worse today, maybe. <laughs> so, but yeah. these I think we can improve on on my grinder. Yeah, and then hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck with uh, getting a good measurement on these once you touch these off. Right. And we're not taking a lot of material off. This, no, this is going to be just tense. 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 Yeah. yeah. So let's go uh, hit these and yep. uh, and see what we do with these. Awesome. Well, these are doing pretty good, huh? Yeah, these are great. I, I think we need to start producing these under the A-bomb logo. I like it. These are these are awesome idea for parallels. They're like great. I told you, man, these have been my favorite parallels forever. I mean, they're real stout, and um, I, you know they got a real simple groove cut in the side. Like they they work really good. They're classic. great. They're little finger pull grooves. Yep. Is all mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. You know? So Lance is just gonna clean them up. He's just gonna clean them up and just make them look good. Last pass. Okay. Last pass and a piece of chicken. All right. <laughs> and we got all kind of stuff going on. We got our lunch there and playing with the shaper over there. And just having all kinds of fun today. All right, guys, Lance has been helping me on the uh, parallels, and uh, he's been uh, getting some of these things ground in. So we're going to do a, a quick inspection on them, and I'm going to let him kind of take over here and, and talk to you about what he's been finding. Okay, well, um, I'm going to start with the shortest set that we did, we messed with yesterday, although I, I, most of the time yesterday Adam was helping me with my stuff, so he's been getting the short suit here. Um, these are the short ones um, of these cool parallels that I'm trying to convince him to produce um, and, and this first set came out just wonderfully these are about two tenths uh, end to end or total run out uh, and after we finished them you can see they're hinging now that one's got a little catch there but they're hinging okay you know here and I must have a little sweat or moisture on the plate but anyhow when we check them Make sure everything's clean here and we run these. They're uh, definitely within a tenth. Um, we were just commenting on the amount of sort of dust in the air. So it's a 50 millionth indicator. The indicator's more sensitive than my shaky hands. I'm gonna try to get them in there a little tighter shot so you yeah. can see that indicator. And I'm marginally autistic when I'm trying to move the uh, parallel and look at the indicator at the same time. I tend to get a little weavy. But definitely better than a tenth, maybe even in the realm of 50 millionths. And then, um, and then this is its uh, brother or sister uh, here. And uh, it's, um, it's not off two tenths. It's not off two tenths. We'll... we'll We'll show it on the other one, but um, these two are matched. That looks, but nonetheless, that looks beautiful. They are quite exceptional, really, really in that place where they're high precision now. And the finish on these, I'm super happy with the finish as well. I have a lot to learn, guys. I, you know, we've done a lot of experimenting, quote unquote, or learning this machine. It's a relatively new machine. I've only had it for, I may be using it for six months, and. Um, and it, it's quite exceptional. It's a brown sharp 618 MicroMaster. And, and so. And, and let's point out that it is the fully automatic MicroMaster because there was a couple mm -hmm. guys that said yeah. they had a 618 MicroMaster, but theirs was <clears throat> manual. Right. Uh, but a different color. So there right. must be differences in some of them. And then this set of three, he had two that were, uh, appeared to be mated in a third one, an orphan. And so we just ground all three of these. We measured these the other day, so I think you've already got footage footage on these. Yeah. Uh, right down the center of these I beams, they're really good. I think they were plus or minus a tenth. Um, but but as you get out on the wings of the I beam, they tend to be a little variation. Yeah. So anybody that wants to comment on that, that would be an interesting discussion to get into. But this, I, I will point out though, I mean they they turned out beautiful though. Oh yeah. The, the grind is just yeah. exceptional on those yeah. things. And um, 
And then this is a the the tallest set, right? Is this the tallest yes, one? Yes, out of the three that are made similar, this is the tallest mm -hmm. out of the height. So, and I'm not going to measure these. I think these were within a tenth. I'll look at them real quick before Adam leaves. Yeah. And I just basically said we should just leave these alone. They're so good. He can just take a set of precision stones. They're already matched. Um, and he can just polish them with a set of precision stones. He knows yeah. somebody that can get get him more <laughs> precision stones. So, yeah. um, And then this is the set that's giving me... Um, giving me the apprentice a run <laughs> for my money and i'm gonna i'm not gonna talk about it right now hopefully we're gonna have some time today for me to try another trick i tried one trick yesterday and it after i ground these i had actually originally made them just a little bit worse these have these are a little bit thinner and they have a um you know from my perspective a huge bow and then I'll show sorry for you zero guys I may not have this on zero all the time so it's um, it's tricky to get those things yeah. on zero so if you this one's making a liar out of me now oh there it goes okay so this um, this parallel basically has two tents in it and a bow and I'm gonna pull it out of here and, and hinge it so you guys can actually see. That's not horrible. I may have had a little grit on it. And then, you can see it's a helicopter on this side. So if I come into this side and I sweep it to the far end, now I'm gonna, I don't know if my hand's in the screen on the right, but I'm gonna push down on this and you see is like a nasty four tenths. So that means it basically has a two tenths bow in the middle of it. Both of these are very similar. And um, I just straight ground them, made them a little worse, three to four tenths. So I've got another trick up my sleeve. We'll see. Hopefully I'll have some success and can come back and brag about it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go play with them and yeah. see if we can improve on, upon that or not. All right, man. All right. Did you say you're going to do anything with these? These well are, today? yeah, these are going to go up on the grinder and get cleaned up. I haven't actually measured these. Let's, if we can, let's yeah. just do that real the, quick. These are some more parallels that I use all the time. All these parallels are, are some of my every day that I've used for 20 years, you know, me and my dad. So it's really cool that, that I got Lance helping me, you know, put a fresh uh, grind on these things and, and making sure that they're straight and parallel. I've, I've never checked them before. We've always just assumed that all these are. Yeah, and as they appear to be. I know people may not believe it, but we have not looked at these, so this is... Um, yeah, we haven't checked these. You, you are finding out while we're finding out. Let me get zoomed in there and see what, see what we're finding out here. Okay, so this one, this one has a... Got a little bow in it. Got a bow in it as well. When they, when they uh, have a bow in them and, and you have the... A convex part down you get fooled by the reading the reading looks a lot better because it'll rock yeah. underneath the needle tip yeah and okay. so you, you it actually looks better than it really is that's yeah. why I always push on the ends of them um, because it's not uncommon at all for these to have a little bow in them so if you set it down on the yeah so you where can it's, where it's touching on the high spots yes so, so it, it um, and I, I know, guys, we're obsessive compulsing over this whole thing here. There, there you can see where the bow is showing up on that end, a couple tenths. But not bad. I mean, really. We, we were talking done. about this kind of stuff, just you and I. Yeah. Everyday general shop use, this is exceptional. Yeah, there's you know, nothing wrong with these. Nothing wrong with this stuff. If you're taking yeah. a piece of steel, you got to drill holes, mill a slot, this is not going to affect your work. It's not going to bother you. This one's a little uglier. This one's got a half thou in it. Yeah, somebody's got a pecker mark in it. Too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Disrespecting the parallel. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, so these will be a project. I know I can make these better for you, Adam, for sure. Um, and, and these are some more of the, the I-beam parallels right mm -hmm. here. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very curious to, to grind these today and see if we have the same results pre and post that we did with the um, sides of these, with the other ones.
Yeah, we'll, we'll touch these up. That one may be fine because there's so much irregularity in the surface of that. Mm -hmm. That one may not be too bad. And I know they need to be flipped over and checked, but this is just for just for our own quick reference. Oh, so that was hmm. a change in height there. Yeah, that's substantial actually. We're we're working on my um, smaller granite here, so not being able to move things around the way I normally would. Oh yeah, so those things are off about, about. one point four something like that thou mm -hmm. in terms of their height. We definitely can make that better. I wouldn't normally be moving it around like that, but we're the camera base is to my left, folks. Anyway, yeah, so I know we can make some improvement in that set as well. So that's sort of some more of the project for today. We'll uh, get this set, this little I-beam set, or not I-beam set, but that little, I don't know what yeah. you call that set. Yeah, these are some more of the classic ones that you see. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, a lot of guys have this style with the holes drilled in it. Yeah. But, uh, We'll make those better, both sets of those better today. Really and cool. then this is my... Um, These are the ones that are really working on Lance right here. <laughs> yeah, and it's really become more of a, my competitive personality now to get those under a tenth and to get that bow out of them. Yep. So I, I, I tried a trick yesterday with the Machinist Vice, one of my better Machinist Vice, and it uh, brought them back to where they were originally after I had done the original grind on them. Um, but I'm not happy with that. I'm going to see if I can get it better. Let's go play, man. All right. Thanks, Adam. How much was that? Is that four tenths? Two. Two tenths. Okay. Yeah. I thought you took two lines. Of... I did. That's two tenths. Two tenths. Okay. Yeah, each line's a tenth. Oh, okay. I was thinking it was two. I misled you the other day said it was half of that, so we're all over the map. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with you, man. I know. I just tell you stories all the time. <laughs> You're already cleaning up all the way oh, down, yeah, though. Oh, yeah. won't take that long. Yeah. yeah. I wasted all of our time on that one set that I've been running. The little bastards. The little bastards. We've <laughs> named them. The little bastards. <laughs> They kicked his butt, man. They may not even go home with Adam today. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see what they look like in a little bit. They may have to stay here with Uncle Lance a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> they will not defeat me. Look at that, man. They look like a mirror to me. I'm going to give those to you. Okay. All right. I'm going to let them see what it looks like. how pretty that is wow getting better grinds each day actually then making some changes to the wheel dressing so I think that's a, makes a big difference I'm gonna have to put these up in the cabinet and go find some more eBay <laughs> parallels and use those <laughs> no I'm just kidding that'd be great Everyday use parallels, just making them a little bit nicer. Yeah. They weren't bad. We were just touching them up. Cool. Yeah. They look beautiful now. Absolutely. guys I'm just doing a uh, recap and uh, to kind of uh, finish off this video here on all of the grinding that Lance helped me do there at his shop these are all the parallels that he ground uh, the couple days that I spent with him so we ended up not grinding 
the uh, the big heavy parallels right here. These guys, they uh, they they are really not out much at all. And that was that one spot that we showed there on one. That's uh, it's just not really. They're not out far enough really to justify the grinding. We could have dusted them off, but you know he was having a couple issues with uh, you know some of these. So we just decided to um, you know leave these alone. He would have ground them for me if I wanted to. I just said let's just leave them like they are. So. There's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly fine. And these as well, this is for the part of the uh, W.E. Jones set I already mentioned. These tested so good that there was really no point in grinding them. So we're going to continue to use those just like they are. But all of these turned out beautifully. These I-beam parallels just look absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, you know, a lot of these right here are what I call my everyday use parallels. I, I, I've used these I-beam parallels a lot. So... It's really cool that these three match now, and of course these two longer ones match now as well. So, I want to give a big thanks to Lance. Uh, Lance, thank you very much. I had an awesome time hanging out with you in your shop, helping you with your stuff, and then you helping me with the grinding. And I look forward to uh, doing some more shop work with you in the future. And I hope everybody has enjoyed the videos, and I've got plenty of content to share with you of, of uh, Lance and I's a few days hanging out and doing some things around the shop. All right. Mm -hmm.